Okay, thank you, Michael. Uh, so I'm going to start. My name is Darius Dresno. You can call me Darek. It's easier pronunciation, I believe. I come from Poland, from Krakow. And uh, first of all, thanks for having me here. Thanks for this opportunity. And I'm going to tell the long story uh, about how the tech writers community in Poland has been built over the past seven years or so. So the story is long, but I'm going to make it much shorter. Uh, I'm not then, I don't feel like I, I can officially represent my country and the, the whole community. I just uh, had the discussion some time ago with Michael and we just decided that maybe it's worth to share some, some experience. Uh, so I will talk about the stuff I was involved in. I will also mention this, the stuff I, I know is happening in Poland, but I'm not the, the owner of that. Uh, hopefully you you will like it. Uh, there will be a lot of space for questions, so I would like to keep it as interactive as possible. Uh, yeah, and that's that's basically the plan. So so let's get started. Uh, this is the list of the things which are happening in Poland right now when we talk about the, the tech writing tech writers community. And those are the, the main topics I am going to, to cover today. So first of all, uh, we have TechWriter PL, which is the, the web page, TechWriters portal we have created seven years ago, uh, and it has grown significantly during this time. Right now, we can say that we have more than half thousand articles located there. It's like a huge knowledge base, but also a lot of other stuff. Uh, we have SOAP conference in Poland, probably you are aware about this, and maybe some of you uh, participated uh, pre-COVID. Uh, we have also the training and certification body uh, created in Poland a few years ago. We have a bunch of groups, meetups, uh, Facebook groups, and we also have podcast and post-diploma studies. Uh, related to technical communication. So that's probably the question to all of you. Uh, would you consider such Polish tech writing community as a strong community? Uh, I tend to say that we, we establish quite strong presence and we improve a lot in terms of visibility of techcom in, in our country. Uh, and the main reason for that is here. About 10 years ago, there was literally nothing. No community, no conferences, no trainings, literally nothing. So we came a long way. And right now, I, I think we have some, some rights to, to say that we, we succeed in, in many areas. A few words about uh, myself. I have uh, more than 50 years of experience in various software companies. Uh, I started as a programmer a long, long time ago, then quickly moved to QA. And um, in majority of my jobs, I was responsible for the testing and the QA quality assurance. But uh, every single time uh, I got also the software documentation under my umbrella. So I usually started in each new company as a QA manager or testing manager, but I ended almost always as a documentation manager as well. Uh, I in, I'm involved in the many activities related to QA and documentation, but the most important ones I would like to, um, to mention now uh, are of course TechWriter PL, which is the, the portal uh, for tech writers in Poland. ITCQF, International Technical Communication Qualifications Foundation, which is the certification and training body. Uh, I also run my own business called DREDAR, which uh, delivers the services related to QA and documentation for the software companies. And I'm also a lecturer at Vistula University uh, when I uh, lead and deliver the post-diploma studies in testing and recently 
in technical communication as well. Uh, those seven things I mentioned on the uh, on the first slide, uh, you can see them here as well. Uh, four of them were co-created by by me. I was involved uh, in them into them from the scratch basically. Of course, I couldn't do it by myself. There was a lot of people involved. Uh, but I will focus today on those four topics because uh, as we said, the, the title of the presentation is the lessons learned from establishing the different kind of communities. And uh, I can provide the lessons from those four. And for the rest, I can just give you some information, basic information and uh, give you my impression and, and some comments and hopefully you can find more information uh, by yourself or by contacting the, the people who who create those those things. Any questions at this stage? I don't see the the chat window when I'm presenting. So has anything appear right now? My only question is how you can achieve so many things all at the same time. It's pretty impressive. Um, but we don't have any more questions in chat right now. I'm sure okay. we will get some. Okay. Thank you. you know, it, 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 it wasn't done uh, one day, one quarter, or even one year. It, as I said, it's, it's seven years and it goes in parallel. Some things are more time consuming. Some, some things are, are less. Of course, my company is a full-time job and this is the, the majority of my time is consumed by that. The rest is somehow the, the site kind of project. And that's why each of them involves much more people than myself. So it's not like I'm the owner. It's not like I'm the, the main person. Uh, I'm the co-creator and co-owner of those stuff. So uh, a lot of credits has to go to the people who, who are cooperating with us on that, on that subject. Okay, if there is no, no question, so let's, let's move one by one. I will start with TechWriter PL and the lessons we, we took from that. Uh, there are two reasons for, uh, for that. Uh, I'm starting with, with TechWriter PL because historically it was the first initiative I was involved in. And secondly, uh, I really believe that it, it gave the roots for all the rest. So without that, probably we, we wouldn't achieve uh, other stuff. So TechWriter PL was created in 2013 uh, as a site project. Uh, this is very simple website. Technically speaking, it's, it's a blog, WordPress blog with um, some theme applied. And as any uh, long site project, it went through lots of ups and downs. As you can see, there were periods where we are really pumped, uh, really excited. And there were also periods where we seriously considered, should we stop, should we close all, all this stuff? But luckily uh, we survived. Uh, I would say that right now we are pretty active and in really good shape. TechWriter PL, Tech PL is right now a team of about six or seven people. So um, it helps a lot when one person is, is busy, another can help and etc. Uh, but I split those lessons uh, into three main phases. I think those phases are very typical to any kind of new project or even startup. So, so I identified the, the start phase. I, then there is the phase of grow and then there is the phase of scaling up, uh, which I believe we are in right now. And I will try to show you the lessons from each of the phases, assuming that some of you may be at the beginning of this journey and maybe you consider to create similar web page in your country. Some of you may be already in the second or, or even the, uh, the third phase. So let me, let me show you how we, how we handled all this stuff. For each of the phase, I'm, I'm going to just tell you uh, the lessons we, we had, uh, which was simply structured like a challenge, 
we have met and then the the response we we discovered sometimes we we created the response sometimes we were just lucky and and uh, we were able to to overcome the challenge and to move forward so i think this slide is basically for everyone who consider to start something like tech writer pl or tech writer dot whatever is your domain in your country uh, having this in mind you probably have also a lot of doubts uh, probably you would like to have a team you don't expect that you can handle it by yourself uh, of course you need a server you need the domain uh, you need to pay for that uh, you may not be capable to make a web pages as a whole you may lack some technical IT skills. Uh, of course, you need a content to make it interesting. You need some graphics to make it good looking. Those are all the things uh, you need from the beginning. But the nice part of that is basically this is not, not really uh, a big challenge, all, all of this together. First of all, when we started, I believe there was two or three of us and it has changed over time. As I said, right now, there is six, seven people, but there, was, there were times when only one person or two people were involved because the rest simply gave up or uh, were too busy or whatever. Uh, but two is enough to start. Uh, I wouldn't recommend to do it by one person. You need to somebody to, to keep you motivated. You need somebody to uh, to keep you excited, you need somebody to argue from time to time. So I believe that two is, is enough. If you can combine a, a team which is uh, bigger, then of course it's, it's better. Uh, the cost of simple server and domain name is about 50 euro in Poland. I believe this is similar in many countries, so it's not a big deal. Of course, you need to pay for that, but this is, let's say, the initial investment. And I would say that the fun you can have when you will try to invite, uh, in, in, you will try to find the right name for that uh, is worth it. So we discuss a lot of different combinations. We discuss different kinds of logo we can create for that. And it itself is a lot of, a lot of funny meetings and a lot of ideas and brainstorming. Uh, if you don't know how to make web pages, then uh, I think it's not it's not a big deal because you will simply learn it uh, by installing the CMS like WordPress, which is probably the most popular right now on your web page. Uh, you will get a very very simple solution, which you can learn probably in few hours, and you can use it to to run your portal for many many years as we are doing. And the content, of course, is a is a challenge as, as well, but uh, you know we are all tech writers. So as one of my tech writers colleagues says, if you are a tech writer and you don't like to write, then probably you need to change the profession. So basically, uh, it it must it it I must admit it is much easier to create content than I told at the beginning. Uh, the secret is that you just need to start you just need to focus for five minutes think about the topic and as soon as you start then it will it will flow at the beginning uh, and also even right now we try to keep the frequency um, around uh, one post a week right now we have twice two posts per week maybe but one post a week is enough and we all know that there is a lot of content in the internet and people are not able to consume everything. So I think to have one uh, longer article, interesting article per week is, is enough to, um, to simply increase your audience. And the graphics, which was for me personally, the biggest challenge, uh, it may be also handled using the tools which are available for free right now, like Canva, like logo generators, you can find them in the internet and for free you can generate, I don't know, hundreds of, hundreds of logos. If you have only the name, you can, you can simply 
use AI or another tools to activate to, to activate to create the logo for you. And I guess that you are also using the the graphical tools in your day-to-day -day job because we need to make some illustrations to our documentations. Tarek. Sure. Sorry, we have a question from chat. Mm -hmm. The question is about uh, tech writing in which language do we write? Do you write in English and does your technical writing get translated into other languages? And do you have to manage that process? No, we created the portal in Polish and this is in Polish until today. From sorry, sorry, from... sorry. I think the question was more about what kind of tech writing you do. I mean, I, I think it's about, uh, I guess the question is to you, but maybe. Ah, maybe okay, you could okay. Mention... So, uh, uh, as I said during this introduction, during introduction, I'm not a tech writer uh, anymore. Uh, I used to manage teams of tech writers, trainers, and testers in many companies. Right now, I'm uh, running the company which provides uh, services, uh, QA and techcom services to other companies, but I'm not writing the content by myself. Uh, usually, uh, I think in all companies I was working in Poland, in Krakow, uh, the content was created in English. And in some of them, it was translated to several languages. It depends on the company size and the, and the customer's base. Uh, yeah, but TechWriter PL is, is fully almost 100% in, in Polish. Sometimes we have interview with English speaking people, so we don't translate it to Polish. We simply put it in English because uh, I would say that Again, almost 100% of Polish tech writers knows English uh, really well because they, they work in this language. Did I answer the question? We can also, we can come back to the topic of localization if, if, we, uh, if we're still interested, maybe towards the end. We'll have maybe 20 minutes at the end and everybody feel free to post more questions in chat as you think of them. Yeah, sure. I think I will also mention uh, a little bit about translate translators and translations on the on the next slides. Yeah. So basically, those are the those are the lessons uh, we we have from the starting phase of our our portal, very starting phase, like a first few months. Uh, and hopefully, I convinced you at least a little that it's not really difficult to start. It's not a big cost. It's not a big effort. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just a matter of being um, a little bit brave or crazy, <laughs> depend how you call it. And uh, after the first weeks, just to stay persistent, to, to create the, the article once a week. Uh, and that's basically it. So when you have it already and it is running, you go to the next phase, which I called the grow phase. And that for us, that was until now the, the, the longest one. So let's say you have your portal up and running, you have some content, you already manage all the technicals and graphicals. And uh, after a few months, probably you can be a little bit disappointed that you have not many visitors. First of all, because probably there is not many tech writers in your country. Uh, secondly, even if you, if there is, there are some they don't know about your web page. Uh, so this is the typical problem of every any single new web page created. Uh, and for that, we have the the response, uh, which is basically add to your um, web page uh, the social media profiles. You can also do it for free. You can create Facebook profile. You can create Twitter. You can pre create a LinkedIn profile, Instagram, probably TikTok or something else. Uh, we created those three and we didn't uh, do it at the same time. I believe we started with Facebook, then we added Twitter and uh, recently probably two years ago, we created our LinkedIn profile. And uh, as those are the, the social platforms, it will definitely help you to 
get some visibility and to get some mm, new followers, not only followers on the social media, but also people who will visit your site and who will uh, read your content. Uh, also, you can create the Facebook group, which I believe is a case for many, many countries. Uh, we also added the Facebook group, but it was the probably the one of the last things we we had we did, and I will discuss it um, separately. Uh, even adding those additional channels, social channels, you can still be not really satisfied with the with the progress. You will see that you have I don't know. 10 visitors, 20 visitors per day. And uh, what you can do to, uh, to improve that. What we did uh, at one point, we decided that we will simply publish job offers for tech writers in Poland, and we'll do it for free. We just created the sub page telling everybody interested that if you have the job for the tech writer, or something similar in Poland, uh, you are looking for tech writer, we can post the offer for free. Uh, and uh, companies uh, learned about that, they use this opportunity, uh, many people found the, their job or changed the job thanks to that. And it also created a lot of um, a lot of new visits on our web page. You can also add to the web page, uh, we did it later on. The list of courses or trainings, which are aimed at, at the technical writers in your country, you can simply connect with the companies which provide the training and give them the opportunity to have another channel to to do the marketing of of this service. And they are really really open for that, of course. It's not a big deal for you because you need to update it from time to time, but it creates another uh, source of, of visitors because people simply will visit the web page to check if there is something interesting uh, for them to learn or, or if there is an uh, interesting job opportunity. So Darek, we got a question from chat about the job market in Poland, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, how many jobs are there for tech writers in Poland? Like very approximately of course maybe like per month or yeah how how many would you guess per month pop up uh, so i'm pretty sure that if i will do the search on one of the um, biggest job portals in poland and i will put tech writer then i will probably get something between 20 to 50 right now okay that sounds uh, pretty healthy okay so we estimate that we have probably, I don't know, maybe thousand tech writers in Poland. This is their very rough estimation. Uh, but definitely I can say that the market is growing. I op I'm on this market from the beginning. So when I started, there was not really uh, many people in this profession and I see how it grows uh, for 15 years already, even more. And I constantly see that there is more demand on the market. There is more offers published, uh, mainly because there is more and more IT companies in our country. So um, this is probably something I should mention as well. We, as my roots are from in IT, and I have uh, majority of my experience comes from IT. Uh, the same is true for the people who are working on TechWriter PL right now. Uh, so, um, yeah, we are focusing mainly on the software documentation and software technical communication. So the market is growing. Uh, there is a lot of job offers uh, and uh, still there is not really many options to get prepared to, to get, you know, the initial uh, knowledge. So that's why we created TechWriter PL, but that, that's why uh, we created also the, the next things I will discuss today. Uh, yeah, the next challenge uh, I believe is that uh, it's easy to get bored when you do it for many, many years. So the things which help is definitely to build a team, to try 
try to invite people to, to help you with the content, to create the content. Uh, meet from time to time. Uh, the main role we have in Tech Writer PL, starting from the beginning until today, is that it has to be a fun. Uh, everybody clearly realized that this is the side project and you may have another priorities in your job and in your life. So uh, we simply enjoy when we can meet, we enjoy when we can create new stuff, new interesting article. And uh, I think we also learned a lot during this time that uh, it, you shouldn't be really, really, you shouldn't be too serious about this stuff to make it, it, it has to be a fun and it is. Uh, of course, after some period of time, you will get tired and you will have, you will go, you will went out, you will go out, or, uh, you will go uh, out of the ideas and uh, it will be difficult to find the new topic, interesting article. And of course, we went through this phase as well. Uh, again, the best solution for that is to invite new people. And one of the best things which we started to do some time ago is to do the interviews. So contact with somebody who is not really willing to create article by himself, herself, uh, but is, is willing to help, uh, uh, but has limited time, limited capacity. Then you can simply create the document on the Google Drive or whatever, uh, put the questions, there and ask this person to fill in the answers when the time permits. And this is how we handle the, the interviews. We have the more or less standard set of questions, uh, both in Polish and in English, because we, we did interviews with many people um, outside of Poland as well. And this is really, first of all, this is really easy content from, from our perspective, because we just need to review it and put it on the web page. Uh, this is also um, convenient for uh, for people we are interviewing, and I think this is also very valuable for the for the readers. It shows that the community is is wide. It shows what people are doing in different companies in different regions, what tools they are using, what advices they can give to to less experienced tech writers. So I really, I really recommend to add interviews to, to such kind of, of, of page. Uh, of course, after some period of time, like, I don't know, three, four, maybe five years, you would like to see some reward. At least some people would expect to, to get some reward from that. And uh, let's be clear about this. There is no finance, financial reward. It's, it's not in commercial there. Uh, for the first five years, I believe it was purely the, the cost and effort, not much, and it was split between many, many people. Uh, so the only reward, real reward, is that you will learn very, you will learn a lot, you will learn new skills, you will learn how to do interviews, you will learn how to do the graphic, you will learn how to do interesting article, you will learn how to set up and maintain the social media. So basically some, somehow in the background after a few years, you can realize that you really have completely new skill set, uh, which is related to the content creation, journalism to some degree, uh, marketing, social media, um, graphical stuff, uh, Good analytics even because we, we analyze the, the number of, of visitors and all this stuff. So this is so this is probably the biggest reward you can get from that. Uh, and it pays off when you put it into your CV and you go to the job interview, it really it really matters. I can tell it from the perspective of somebody who was hiring tech writers, and I also can share some stories of people who involved into Tech Writer PL and they mm, immediately saw that it helped them to, uh, to, to make, uh, to, to, to improve their career path. Uh, another thing which we can do, uh, you can do, and we did it as well, is to partner with conferences. So uh, 
having some critical mass already and being on the market for a few years, we are able to connect with conferences organizers like Ride the Dogs conference, for instance, but also conferences in Poland, conferences uh, related to not only tech writing, but in general to IT conferences for developers, uh, for business analysts, for UX. Uh, also, we have partnership with MATCAP uh, conference, uh, which is organized once a, once a year in, in US. And thanks to being their media partner, we were able to go to those conferences spend day two or even more there uh, without any any fee the only uh, the only thing we need to do was to just put on our website information that the conference uh, is starting uh, that you can that there is a call for papers what are the rules where is the conference some basic information and at the end uh, being there uh, we were always creating some kind of report which was published on our website so you can find on on tech writer pl you can find the reports from all ride the docs conferences for the last i don't know five years maybe even more and it is it was really a reward because some people uh, for some of us it was the only opportunity to to go there because we didn't have the budget by ourselves. Our companies didn't have a budget to pay for that. So basically, thanks to being the tech writer PL, being the partner, media partner, we are able to, to see uh, a lot of interesting stuff, uh, see nice cities, and also meet uh, people from other countries. So that's the phase, the middle phase. And those are the lessons I have from these uh, memories. Any questions? Uh, we had a lot of questions about the the job market, actually. But uh, maybe we should save it towards the end so we, we get through all of your presentation. OK. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure if I can answer all of them, but I will try, definitely. <laughs> we'll leave some time at the end to chat. OK. Okay, phase uh, three, the phase where we are right now, I would say, uh, in terms of Tech Writer PL, I would say that we are in the scale phase. So we are stable right now. We have, as I said, the team of six, seven people. We are able to publish uh, regularly, but uh, then you would like to do more. You would like to do something more interesting. You would like to have more impact, more contacts. And uh, of course, you still have the cost of the server and domain, usually it's paid uh, annually. It's not a big cost, but year after year, it sums up to, to some significant amount of, of money. Uh, so to, what, what we did to, to do the next step, um, being, let's say, the mature uh, website, but to move, to move forward and to be even more recognizable and more, more fun. So first of all, at, after some period of time, we decided that we will not publish job offers for free anymore. We said, okay, we have plenty of them because the market was growing. So there were months uh, where uh, when we have like, I don't know, five job offers on our webpage and it started to look like um, the job market, not the, not the um, tech writer PL. So we decided to introduce some small fee and right now, if somebody, if the company would like to publish the job offer on our web page, they need to pay some small amount of money. It's like 20, 30 euro. And thanks to that, first of all, we have less job offers on our website. I think it's it's very reasonable amount uh, right now. It's like one per month. And uh, this money is enough to pay for the domain and for the for the server. So right now we don't have this additional annual cost we need to pay from, from the private pocket. pocket. We, we simply um, can uh, earn the money, which is enough to cover the cost. 
Uh, also, the challenge is, which may be surprising uh, to you, that uh, having five or more people in the team is sometimes a challenge because everyone has different view, different opinion. Uh, it's not really a structured organization. We don't have much processes. Uh, so at some point in time, uh, it may be a challenge to have everyone on the same page, uh, to have everyone feeling equally important, etc. Uh, and the things which help us to overcome this are basically the regular meetings. And uh, again, reminding everyone that this is a side project and it has to be fun. First of all, it's not a, it's not a job, it's not a career, it's not a business. So right now we are meeting once a month uh, and I would say that this is, this is enough. The meeting has no really formal agenda. We just say, okay, I have idea for this and that. I can write article about this, or maybe somebody else can do it because I don't have time. Some people just come and say, uh, I'm busy this month, so I won't be available, and this is fine as well. So uh, yeah, you can also you can also respond to this challenge pretty easily. Uh, again, uh, even having five people in the team or more people in the team, uh, at some point of time, you feel that, hey, we have written about almost everything. There's not so much happening in the tech writers world to write an article every week or two articles per week. But then you can try to discover new kind of content. And one of the things we introduced are the salary surveys once a year we ask all tech writers in Poland to fill in the simple form, Google form, when they put their salaries and some additional data about the, the company they are working on, the location, the experience, uh, and similar stuff. And based on that, we, we can publish the report. We just started this process for 2021. Uh, so the salary survey survey for this year has just started. We will collect the data for them for a month, and then we will publish the detailed report. It will be, I believe, the fifth one already. So you we will be able to uh, analyze the trends. We will, we will be we we will be able to see uh, how many people responded. What is the average salary? Has it uh, grow? Uh, what is the what are the trends? Mm, probably you, you can also have the question how many people answer to that. So for the past three years, I believe we were able to pass the 100 participants. So we have the data from 100 tech writers, Polish tech writers, the salary data, and based on that you can you can create some. Some basic metrics, and I think it, this is also helpful. And people are looking into those reports when they are trying to get a new job, change the job, uh, get salary increase, etc. Uh, another thing which you can do to grow, if you feel that you already did majority of the stuff in in your area, is to reach out to other professions, and this is what we are trying to do right now. Uh, we realized that probably every tech writer in, in Poland who is aware that he or she is a tech writer knows that the profession, they probably know our portal already. But there are people who are involved in documentation process like developers, UX designers, UX writers, QAs and, uh, and translators you just mentioned. Uh, and they also uh, have a, a lot of interesting stuff we can learn. And probably we have some interesting stuff um, they would like to read. So this is what we are trying to do right now. We are trying to reach out to other uh, areas of IT creation and uh, to be more visible for people like developers, QAs, 
UX translators. I believe especially people um, creating APIs, um, developers struggling, they are struggling a lot in documentation and we can do a lot together. And uh, translators, this is also the very nice and very big group, at least here in Poland. And a lot of them are thinking slowly about moving to IT, for instance. Uh, a lot of tech writers in Poland, I don't know how it is in your country, probably very similar, but uh, in our country, a lot of people came to the profession from the um, language, after the language studies. So they studied English and they became the either the translators or English teachers. And there is there are a big communities of English teachers in Poland and translators as well. And all of them, uh, first of all, they need to learn that tech writing exists. But as soon as they learn, they usually say, oh, this is something probably I, I can consider. It's, it's IT world, it's, it's interesting, it's well paid. And this is something um, I'm pretty capable to learn. So translators uh, are one of our best friends, I would say. What else? Uh, of course, you can try to become more international. So this is what I'm trying to do right now. You can go to Write the Docs Vilnius. You can go to conferences. You can go to meetups. These days, of course, everything is online, which makes things even easier. So this is what we are trying to do as well. We had a long many discussions, shouldn't we move to English? Shouldn't we translate the stuff and the uh, 500 articles from Polish to English? But finally we, we decided, we never decided to do that. Uh, but definitely we are looking for some, uh, to expand our network in other countries, to find people who are doing the same in, in their countries, to find people who would like to do what we are doing. So that's why we have that's why we have this meeting today. Yeah, that's that's it regarding Tech Writer PL. That was the biggest uh, part of my presentation because this is the biggest and oldest activity I'm involved in. So, uh, any questions related to that at this stage? If not, I will move to to another things we have in Poland. Okay, seems like there is nothing to discuss right now. So let me tell you a few words about second uh, second lesson. Probably you have heard about SOAP conference. This is the conference which was established somewhere in parallel to TechWriter PL. I believe we started at the same year. Uh, and. Uh, I believe they didn't know about us and we didn't know about them, even if <laughs> we are in the same city. Uh, SOAP conference uh, is a annual conference happening in Krakow, uh, established and uh, created and maintained, managed by a group of people uh, from, from our city mainly. Uh, this year, it, uh, sorry, past year, uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen because of the of the pandemic. I don't know. I'm not sure what are the plans for this year because of the of the difficult pandemic situation in Poland right now. Uh, but uh, the main message I would like to say here is that first of all, you should check the SOAP conference if you are not familiar with that yet. Uh, and I put here the the screenshot from the YouTube uh, channel when you can see the recording from the past few editions, I think this is really useful. This is really interesting stuff. And it also will give you some opportunity to feel the atmosphere of this, of this conference. Uh, I used to visit a lot of conferences related to QA and technical communication. Uh, and I must say that this one is, is special in terms of the climate and the people and the atmosphere. So I, I really recommend to uh, to move into this uh, YouTube channel 
type SOP, technical communication, and you will see a lot of interesting stuff uh, and you can learn a lot from the presentations which are located there. The one thing I can add it from the perspective of somebody who was not involved in SOAP, but I was involved in other conferences, is that you also should consider to have something like this in your in your country. If you don't have any, anything like this, like the conference, it's much easier to organize than you probably think. Uh, you just again, you just need a few friends, few tech writers who are really trying to do something, and then the budget is not a problem. Uh, you you can organize a big conference with almost zero budget, and if you would like to do it a little bit more professional you can invite companies from your country to become a sponsors, the partners, and probably they will be happy to, to give you some money to make this event more professional. Uh, and as the reward, they will be able to get new contacts. They will be able to hire tech writers and they will be able to present the, themselves during the conference. So yeah, SOAP conference, uh, highly recommended. Even I'm not the owner, I don't feel really comp competent to talk about the details, uh, but I'm pretty sure uh, many of you already alre already heard about this and I can say only only a good, good words about this um, initiative. Any questions or comments? Do we have anyone who attended the SOAP in Krakow already? Hi, we did have one question from chat. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, we had a few. So um, going back a bit about your story, what was your first inspiration to get started with the portal? And the second question um, is maybe a little bit of a joke question, but maybe it's interesting. <laughs> uh, how come there's no Lithuanians in here? Are all the tech writers in Lithuania expats? Well, um, I know there's I, I know some Li some Lithuanian tech writers for sure um, and other content writers, but maybe <laughs> I don't know if you want to answer that one. Yeah, the second one is a little bit tricky for me, but the first one is easy. And this is uh, actually this is a good question. And I, the story behind this is that uh, as I mentioned, I started my career in IT as a programmer, then I quickly moved to quality assurance, to the testing. And I was managing the testing teams and documentation teams in parallel in, in few companies. And as a manager of those teams, I always had a very strange problem. I couldn't spend the training budget for my tech writers. I usually had the budget for, let's say, the, 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 some number of, of dollars, some, some amount of, of money uh, per head. And for the testers, we always could use it and spend it in one quarter uh, using different kinds of trainings, going to the conferences, et cetera. And for the team of tech writers I was managing at this time, there was literally nothing. So I was asking them, find something, find some training you'd like to attend, to go to some conference, but they were not able to find anything. And, uh, you know, being as old as I am right now, I, I also observed how the testers profession, QA, software QA profession evolved for the past 20 years. And I was able to build an analogy in my mind. Uh, I saw how the testers became really professional, the profession grow. There are some professions within the QA right now. There is a lot of training, certification, uh, a lot of conferences. So I said to myself and to my friends, okay, why don't we duplicate this model and just build an analogy and try to create the same stuff for, uh, for tech writers in Poland. So uh, for testers, for instance, we have very popular and the biggest portal in Poland, which is called testers.pl, testers PL. And uh, we say, okay, this is very popular. People like it, it works. Let's create something similar for tech writers. And this is how tech writer 
PL started. That was basically the idea. So a, a lot of things I'm talking about right now, they are maybe not copied, but they are inspired by, uh, by the QA community we have in Poland. I, I am also very involved in QA community in Poland because those are my two, two areas I'm operating in. Uh, so I know how the testing community has grown in, for instance, in Poland, we have the meetup of QAs and this is like 3000 people right now, 3000 testers in Poland uh, are uh, registered in the, in the meetup. We have one meetup uh, in Krakow and I, I saw it, I bid it from the scratch, basically from zero to 3000. So. Yeah, so the, the, the idea uh, came from a little bit different profession and uh, I'm just wow. trying to repeat the good ideas I saw in testing world and avoid the mistakes I also saw a lot in, in QA area. That's amazing. That answers one other question I had. Thank you. The question about keep going from QA to tech writers. So thank you. Um, sorry, the question was very serious um, and it's a fair question. Do you have a lot of like English speaking people coming to live in Poland because of the good jobs there? Or is it mainly people who already are Polish or live in Poland and they just speak very good English and they can get these jobs? Is it like that or, or the other way? I would say that the majority of tech writers we have in Poland are Polish people. Sure. As, as I said, majority of them, I, I think more than 50%, they are uh, graduated from English lang language studies. That's the right. that's, that's the most typical scenario, I would say. Of course, it's not 100%, but I think more than half. Uh, so this is how it works. Right now, we also have a growing community of uh, IT people who came to Poland from Ukraine, for instance, from Belarus. Uh, but I don't know many tech writers yet. So I think the answer is uh, most of them are from Poland. Excellent, thank you. Uh, okay, so that was the, the lesson two, the SOAP conference, which I really, really recommend. And uh, hopefully we all can meet one day again in Krakow, face to face over a beer or wine, uh, just to talk about Techcom on the, another edition of the, of the SOAP conference. Uh, lesson, uh, lesson, third lesson, lesson number three, uh, which was also built by an analogy to the to the QA uh, word. You may be familiar, or maybe you have heard about the certificate, most popular cert certificate for testers. It is called ISTQB, International Software Testing Qualification Board, if I remember correctly. I believe right now million people have have this certificate around the world, and uh, nothing like this existed for uh, tech writers. As I said, I was not able to spend my training budget. Uh, even I have it uh, quite quite nice. So uh, at one point uh, in the past. I said, uh, we said with, with few friends, okay, let's build it. Let's try to do it. Let's do the certificate, which will, first of all, standardize the knowledge about the profession. Secondly, give people the opportunity to learn, to speak the same language and get recognized, get the certificate at the end. And this is how the ITCQF was created. The abbreviation comes from International Technical Communication Qualifications Foundation. You can find it under the itcqf.org address. Uh, and basically, this is the um, body. Technically speaking, it's a foundation. It's a nonprofit organization which put in place the syllabus. Uh, like It's a document like 50 pages long, which summarizes all the basics about our profession. It was created with by people who were really experienced in the area and people from various countries contributed. However, the, the roots are in Poland and the, the location is still in Poland. And uh, 
we created it uh, from the beginning, trying to be global uh, from the day one. So we said, it doesn't make sense to create the training program or certification only for Polish people, because it won't be really recognizable and it won't bring much value. So we created it in English from the beginning. And uh, yeah, it was like seven years ago as well, six, seven years ago, uh, and it is uh, up and running. Uh, we see growing interest year by year. We are able to update the syllabus three times during this time. We were able to deliver the training sessions to, to people from various countries, as you can see on the screen. Uh, and it is still growing. Uh, so yeah, also something you may you may consider, maybe not recreate because having another standard in another country, I don't know if it makes much uh, sense, but you can always join. Uh, we are looking for ambassadors in different countries. Uh, we are looking for board members. We are looking for people who would like to become a trainers and train another people. We are looking for companies uh, interested in becoming the training providers in their regions, in their languages. And uh, even if it doesn't sound like something for you, uh, in the section materials on the web page, you will find all the materials which were created, the syllabus, uh, other materials related to Techcom, uh, where you can learn for free the basics of the, of the technical communication uh, profession. One thing I would, I would add to it, uh, it was also created by the people who are working for many, many years in IT industry. So when you see the logo, the, the TC, is marked in red uh, because of the technical communication, but I think easily we could move this this uh, red uh, uh, rectangle to the, to the left and uh, and make the IT the red one because it shows the documentation basic from the IT perspective. So the syllabus talks, for instance, about mobile apps. It talks about API documentation, release notes, things like this. Any questions related to that? I'm sure there will be later. OK, so let's move forward. Uh, yeah, and this thing is, uh, it might it may sound complicated, and it is complicated, to be honest. Uh, when we started, we probably didn't realize how big animal we are trying to, uh, to have. Uh, but finally, we managed. And uh, yeah, and it is also uh, really rewarding from, from our perspective. Uh, just to give you some, some overview, to create the certificate, you need to create the, the syllabus which is a huge effort and you need to involve a lot of people and you need to read a lot of standards and, and think uh, really, really what is the best way, how to put uh, it into the right structure and form. Then you need to create the training materials, which is hundreds of slides and you can, and then you have to create the exam questions. And of course you need to partner with other countries with the, uh, with other organizations. So it's a huge uh, it's a huge effort, but this is also really really rewarding because first of all we see really good feedback on the on the market. People who attend the training they say they says that it is uh, really value adding. It helped them to either solidify the the knowledge they have. Uh, or to get into the into the market because still there is not many universities teaching people how to become a tech writer and for some people this is the only option and you know being global is a is a big challenge but on the other hand uh, you have to learn a lot you expand your network trem tremendously so yesterday i was talking to uh, to person from India interested in in uh, in this uh, stuff. Uh, next week we talk uh, with people from from Germany. Uh, we discuss it with people uh, from Romania uh, two weeks ago. So it's also a great opportunity to 
to meet people from different countries and to understand their perspectives and, and their markets. That's also one of the reasons I have this presentation today, because during those talks, I realized that many, many countries are going through the same challenges we had in Poland a few years ago. So when I talk to people from Bulgaria, Romania, Lithuania today, I see that you are uh, where we were a few years ago. And you know it's good to discuss, and I think it's really good to, to learn from each other. Okay, let's move forward. We have two questions from chat, sorry. Shoot. Uh, first is about becoming a tech writer. Is API documentation the best thing to learn if you want to be a tech writer? Uh, I would say that right now, this is probably the hot test topic. So there is a lot of job yeah. offers for API writers. But if this is uh, your first contact with IT and you don't have the programming, at least basic programming skills, you don't have the computer science background or any kind of technical background, I think it will be difficult to get into the profession uh, becoming API uh, documentation writer because companies hiring such people, they look for somebody who can um, easily understand developers and to translate developer slang into something which is more understandable understandable for another developers. So I yeah. would say that uh, for somebody who is not, uh, who comes from like language studies, for instance, or who was a translator or English teacher, it may be a little bit too high to start uh, at this level. It may be difficult to get the first job it's a very niche area right it's very it's, specific it's niche but this niche is growing tremendously and i see yeah, a lot yeah. of potential that you know for for me uh, it's easy to talk about this because i i i'm i finished computer science many years ago so, so and then, then i started as a programmer then moved to qa and documentation so i still can talk to developers i believe i don't understand a lot of the stuff new stuff because it's difficult to, to keep up with the, all the changes and all the tools. Uh, but for somebody who is coming from, from outside of IT, it may be really a big challenge. The, I'm sure we can go into it again later. Um, someone else asked, can you share resources to learning API documentation? I don't know if you have anything on the website, maybe on, on uh, okay, people are sharing them in chat, but do you have any favorites? Uh, I think the best materials available, uh, which are on the on the website right now, not on our website, on the internet, is uh, a person from US, Tom Johnson, if I remember correctly. He has yeah. a big portal about API documentation. He works for Google, I believe, right now. And he also delivers the training materials, and most of them are for free. Mm, so yeah, probably when you put API documentation training and most probably Tom Johnson, if I remember the first name correctly. I'd rather be writing. Yes, exactly. That's the name of the of the blog or, or the web page. I'd rather be writing. Exactly. We have independent confirmation, people seconded and thirded in the chat. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I I really recommend that. In, the same Oh, in our materials, we just mentioned this as a kind of one of the kinds of the documentation you should know, but we are not uh, delivering the so uh, so big uh, training. I think the training which you will find on the I'd rather be writing page is like for a few days. Yeah, yeah, it's big. Um, that leads perfectly into the next question, which is how does the ITC, uh, ITCQF certification process look? And how much does it cost? Uh, OK, this is a little bit longer story, but I will try to keep it short. So first of all, to get certified, you need to pass exam. And of course, you can do it online right now. The cost of the exam, if I remember correctly right now, it's 135 euro. To approach the exam, you, you, don't, you don't have to go to the training. So you can simply download the syllabus, read it carefully, carefully several times and approach the exam. And there is a big chance that you will pass it. 
Of course, there is a training connected with that. And the training is a two days long, fully packed, like eight hours plus eight hours uh, every day. And it goes to the syllabus. It uses the, the slides, the training materials we created. It is also uh, connected with some real life examples, some quizzes, some questions. And the training is delivered by the experienced tech writers or technical writing managers. Uh, and the cost of the training is usually around 500 euros, if I remember correctly. So yeah, so th that's basically the, uh, the process. You do, but again, uh, you don't have to, training is not mandatory. You don't have to take the training. You can just approach the exam. Exam is 40 questions. You have one hour, uh, it's a test. Uh, multiple choice test, you need to get 75% to pass. All this stuff is also on the itcqf.org webpage if you are interested. So hopefully that, that answered the question. Great, thank you. Feel free to, to ask uh, later or co contact me after the meeting as well. Okay, that was itcqf. Uh, beside the portal, conference, and certification, we have other stuff in Poland. So for instance, we also, for instance, we also have the meetup. It was called, it is called Meet Content, uh, created by another group of people. Right now we, we are all friends, I would say, but it was created independently and I wasn't involved into that. Uh, so meet content, when you go to the meetcontent.org, it's, it's in English, you will see that there was a meetup created some time ago. Uh, people used to meet face-to-face uh, -face later on online. I think they had more than 10 uh, meetings already, uh, just to discuss what you discuss during the meetup. So share the best practices, discuss the problems, the tools, uh, so I'm not going to teach you how to do the, the meetup because we are <laughs> during the meetup right now. So, so it's, it's pretty similar. But uh, another thing which is important, an, another group of tech writers created a Matcap Flare users group in Poland, Polish Flare user, user group. And uh, this is related to the Matcap Flare tool Probably you, some of you are familiar with that very popular tool for the tech writers. And uh, yeah, that was simply the, the Facebook group created to share the uh, best practices, problems, information, tips and tricks related to this specific technical writing tool. Uh, the good thing about this is that when you create something like this, the company in such case in this case, Matcap is usually very open to support you somehow to, I don't know, pay for a, uh, for the meeting place, uh, sponsor some some gadgets, sponsor some some beer maybe, some pizza. Uh, so basically, whatever you will find useful, you can discuss with such companies. And uh, Matcap is not the only one who, who is open uh, for cooperation in. Uh, according to such rules. So I also recommend if you don't have any idea and you are afraid that you you can spend a lot of private money to do the things I showed before, maybe you should look around for the for the sponsor who is uh, really active active on the technical communication market in your country. Questions or comments? Okay, uh, we also created Facebook group. It was created as an addition to the portal. Uh, one day, uh, one of the of the colleagues said, okay, maybe we will add the, we have the Facebook profile, maybe we will create the group. And this group was a surprise for us because we didn't invest a lot into that. Uh, we just put the simple rules, uh, define the goal, uh, and define the, the target audience for that. And uh, very quickly, we, uh, we re realized that a lot of people joined. 
Right now, it's more than 500 tech writers on this group. Uh, and this group is really active. You can see on the chart how it was growing. I wouldn't say it's a, it's a steady growth, it's regular, but it is growing. And uh, people share sometimes jokes, sometimes uh, information about the, the tools, about the best practices. We also um, put the rule um, that uh, companies can post the job offers there, but uh, there is only one obligation. They need to put the, the salary brackets. They need to put the, the money the inside just to be, just to avoid some some confusion and provide some additional value to the readers uh, yeah so this is something you can you can create easily uh, with zero cost the only thing i would recommend are listed on the on the slide so define the goal think a little bit who would be your persona your target audience establish some rules and put them on the on the top of the of the groups uh, also, it's good if one, two, three people, uh, usually the founders can act as the moderators and if the rules are broken, uh, they can uh, simply ask people to correct the post, maybe sometimes delete, sometimes initiate the discussion. It's not a big deal, it doesn't consume a lot of time, but it brings a lot of value. I know that there are, there are Facebook groups in countries like Romania, for instance, probably others. So it may be also a good idea to start in your country. Uh, we also have a podcast uh, in Poland. It's in Polish. It's, uh, it's the name, official name is Tech Writer Koduje, which means Tech Writer is coding, is writing the code. And this is really interesting stuff uh, because it focuses on the technical approach to the uh, to the tech writing, to documenting the code, to documenting API, and also to and also on um, automating the um, tech writers' activities. So all the tools, all the scripts you can write by yourself, those are the topics which are listed on this podcast. It was created by one of the two of two two guys who used to cooperate with us on Tech Writer PL. Uh, later on, they they decided to to move into the podcast uh, world, and I think they're doing really really good uh, job. Uh, I think all the almost all the uh, editions are in Polish, so probably you won't you won't get much out of it if you don't know our language, but this is also a good inspiration uh, for you, I believe, and uh, feel free to contact them. I'm sure they will be happy to, to discuss how to set up such, such thing. Uh, yeah, and podcasts uh, are getting, I think, more and more popular in all countries, so people love to, love to listen to that, and I think this is the future. I will move forward. Uh, last but not least, uh, we, after all this stuff, we created the post diploma studies. And it was also somehow the result of, of uh, my and other people frustration. A lot of documentation managers in Poland, they had the problem that they were not able to find the right people because there was almost no university having the program connected with tech writing, teaching people how to write the documentation. So um, we said, okay, why don't we create the post-diploma studies to help people like, for instance, translators, English teachers, but also others to move into this profession. And uh, it took us a few years to start the first edition because we didn't have enough participants. The universities usually want to have like 12, 15 people to start. But finally, we were able to, um, to establish the group uh, to find the, the lecturers. Uh, yeah, and it is up and running. Uh, we are close to, to the end of the first edition. Uh, I must admit it's a, it's a challenge for all of us lecturers because you need to prepare 
the business case to the university to sell it uh, in, internally, let's say. Uh, you need to have the formal program. You need to find a group of people who will be willing to, to share the knowledge and who will be willing to work during the weekends because this is the, every second week we have like 15 hours of, of lectures. Uh, again, we were able to get the free license, educational licenses from various tool providers which is, I believe, which is great. We also included ITCQF program into this to give students opportunity to, to get certified at the end, to be prepared for the certification. Uh, so yeah, this is a huge effort, uh, but the good thing is that, first of all, uh, it is it was built based on the, all the previous stuff I presented. So for instance, you know, when you write the articles about Techcom, uh, for tech writer PL for seven years, then automatically you learn a lot uh, because you try to um, explain some something to, to some things to people. So you need to understand it really well. So based on that, you are building your own knowledge. And now I can see that we are just passing this knowledge to our students, and we very often we we use the examples from TechWriter PL, from ITCQF, from, from other sources I just presented, and students, uh, I would say, really, really like it. And this is uh, probably, for me personally, this is one of the best things because it gives you a feeling that you are simply changing somebody somebody's life, uh, at least the professional life, to something better. When, you know, we have people like, translators who are in the uh, in the job for many years they are a little bit tired they're a little bit afraid that the automated automated translator will kick them out of the market uh, we have um, english teachers uh, who are not really well paid and are a little bit dem demotivated especially during pandemia and you know having such people and showing them you can go to IT, you can get new job. It's one year course, 180 hours, I believe. Uh, I think it's easily rewarding and it motivates me a lot when I see, hopefully I will see after some period of, period of time that they were able to, to get the new job, to change the profession, uh, to get better salary, to get promoted. So this is also the option. If you have good contact with universities, if you have universities in your country which are business oriented, which would like to deliver to the job market people who are prepared for the challenges uh, for IT, for new technologies, I think that may be also an option for you. Questions? We have a lot of interesting questions and things in chat, Derek, but I think they're getting so specific that it's uh, it's best to leave them to the end. Okay, I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm already almost done. So yeah, to summarize, those are the main seven lessons I have for you, I had for you for today. Uh, our portal for Polish tech writers, our conference, our certification, our meetups, and Facebook groups, the podcast and post-diploma studies. This is all the stuff we were able to create. The community was able to create during the seven years. And you know, seven years may seem like a, a lot of time, but to be honest, it's not. So uh, you don't have to do all this stuff. You can start with one and then try to add another on top of that. So now probably you can tell me if you see it it is a strong community or not but i believe that a lot a lot of things is is happening there and uh, last but not least i think i have one final lesson uh, probably the most important one and this is something uh, i would like to to really uh, emphasize whatever you you decide to do it can be the simple blog, it can be the Facebook group, it, it can be the Twitter profile, 
uh, it can be something bigger like studies, certification, podcast, whatever. Uh, whatever it will be, you will have opportunity to gain new skills. You will learn new stuff and this stuff will be useful for you in the future, for sure. You, you cannot expect when and, uh, and where, but it for sure will increase your skills. And of course, uh, it will also pay off on the, on the job market. So that's, that's one lesson. Another thing, uh, everything is connected. So even if I presented it in the sequence and it looks like each of them is completely different world, in fact, uh, all of them are, are connected. So TechWriter PL is a partner, media partner of SOAP conference. Uh, ITCQF trainings are listed on TechWriter PL. Uh, meet content people, uh, we, uh, we uh, learn about them through TechWriter PL and right now together with them, we are delivering those studies. We are working as a lecturers at the university. Okay, TechWriter PL, uh, TechWriter Koduje, the podcast was created by people who started at TechWriter PL some time ago and also uh, by one of the SOAP co-creators, I believe. So all this is connected and thanks to creating this stuff, uh, all of those people meet each other. Some of them become the, the real friends. Uh, we learn from, from each other and we are able to build new stuff, more complicated, bigger one, like the studies, like certification. So yeah, you, I think you, you can't lose whatever you will do. Uh, the only way of losing is to not do anything. I, I, I really recommend to start at least some very basic activities. Uh, I remember seven years ago when we were getting the emails uh, when the TechWriter PL started and we were getting emails like, wow, I was sure that I'm the only one in the world doing this stuff. So maybe a little bit like you in Lithuania, Michael, right now. But uh, literally, we, we were getting such kind of emails. And finally, all those people uh, got connected. All of them got somehow promoted. They started different projects in tech com areas. They moved from companies to companies. Uh, and we are right now, I would say that we are one big family. And we still have a lot of fun doing this stuff. And there is a lot of passion behind. And there is a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, I think this is the more, most important lesson I have for you from Poland. So thank you very much. That was all from my side. Tarek, thank you so much from Write the Docs uh, here in Vilnius and around the world today. We did have one last question, uh, which I missed, sorry, uh, missed before. Any comments about um, maybe salaries, but also like uh, career progression, career opportunities for going into uh, management positions in Poland specifically? So I don't have the salary ranges right now in my mind, but I can send you the links sure. afterwards because as I said, we have the, the reports, annual reports from the salary surveys. So Someone... I, have, I have access to really precise data. I just don't have it uh, on top of my mind right now. That's fantastic. Someone just shared the link, actually. So that's great. OK, so that's one thing. Another uh, question was about the, the career path. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so first of all, there is uh, still significant amount of job offers for, I would say, juniors, uh, even more for the middle uh, level, let's say, tech writers but we also see uh, the market is growing for the top or senior positions. I think it's, it's not a secret that Google is right now hiring in, in, in Warsaw in Poland and they are increasing their team significantly. And there is, uh, you know, in, only in Krakow when I live, there are companies like IBM, Motorola, 3DS, uh, Pegasystems, Sabre, 
and probably I missed about 10 hiring the, the tech writers right now. And this is only Krakow. Krakow is one of the IT hubs in Poland, but we have also a lot of people in, in three city, Gdańsk, Gdynia, uh, in Wrocław, in Warsaw, in Poznań. Uh, so I think there's uh, there is a lot of opportunities. Uh, yeah, so why don't you try? I think we're going to end the recording now, but uh, people can stay on to chat. We want to thank you again very much. I think you did a wonderful job of presenting Polish tech writing and the community and uh, the country <laughs> all in such a great light. Everybody is very interested. Um, I'll share I'll share some of the comments after. Uh, but everybody says thanks. Thanks again. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. And thanks for having me here.